Hey, I'm Chris with Drift HQ. And I'm Cricket with Drift HQ. And we pulled this motor out 20 times already. We're gonna have Sean make the car go and Chris is gonna make it stop. We have the car on the lift right now, so uh, removing the fuel lines are kind of running under our lift points. So instead of taking it off the lift, we're just kind of cutting these pieces. Since they're kind of rusted out anyway, plus the stock fuel lines on this car are rubber, which isn't going to handle the E85 too well. And also the stock fuel pressure on this car is only like 25 PSI. We're going to be running 45 PSI, I think, as a baseline on this RB with a rising rate regulator, so it's going to get even higher than that. So just to be safe, we're just going to run the 6AN all the way from the front to the back. we got a bunch of cool DW parts like the pressure regulator and fuel filter and in-tank pump we're going to be upgrading the system with too. So we're just El Chapo right now. Yeah, so we're just cutting stuff. Try this at home. Uh -huh. oh, see it. She's a squirt. Philip Corvette's from the trunk? Yeah. So this has this cool little access lid we got laying over there right now. But if you remove this and this little rubber piece that has a little drain line and everything, it's actually really convenient because your whole pump assembly is part of the fuel lid and everything like that. So you don't have to remove anything to change these fuel pumps. There's just, what, 10 bolts around the perimeter of this. You disconnect these three hoses and then we pull the whole pump assembly out. The other cool thing about it is all of our power wires are already 14 gauge, which go to the stock fuel pump assembly. So we don't have to upgrade our power wires, make a new bulkhead for the wiring for our upgraded fuel pump. We got a bunch of cool DW stuff in the build. We got a, a DW 400 fuel pump. We are running their 110 millimeter fuel filter, their DW fuel pressure regulator and the gauge. So once we have all that positioned up, I can start running all the lines from the front to the back. We got a bunch of cool vibrant parts going on there for the hose ends and for the hose itself. And so once we get everything laid out, then we can pressure test our fuel system and figure out what size injectors and stuff like that we're running. We're just zip tied right now, don't judge it. Look over here. So over here we have our uh, DW fuel filter in a nice serviceable, accessible, but also safe location. So then our um, feed line goes to the back of the rail. Side of the 180 at back so I don't have to run the fuel feed line underneath the intake manifold and clutter up everything up here because we already have two sensors, our NVCS actuator, and whatever else we're going to have going on up here. I just decided to route that back to the pressure regulator and then now I just have to run the lines from there to the tank. Waiting on two little compression fittings to adapt to the stock top hat on the fuel system. So, I don't know if you guys noticed, but there are some differences. When we initially got the Corvette, the C4, we wanted the digital gauges. The digital gauges only went up to 89, and then from 90 to 94, they switched to a different bumper and back to analog gauges. So the Bjork kit comes with this updated bumper with the older version rear bumper. So we went with the older version, and as you can see, that's, there's some differences here. This one has a really short corner light here. The newer one has a longer one, and also, so this is more boxy on the front of this. This is more rounded off. This also has the integrated trim already on it and longer light. So we went and picked up one from our boy over at Coastal Corvettes. He has everything in stock. That guy's awesome. So Name is nice John. He has bumpers, hoods, rear hatches. He has anything and everything you need. Hit him up. Guy's awesome. So we're going to take all the inners out of this one because this bumper actually fits for the new York kit. So if you want to price it out individually, we looked at these corner lights and the fog lights they're about nine hundred dollars for a set so we went with a whole front end with the bumper and everything for i think it was nine hundred dollars or eight hundred dollars so i'm going to take all of this apart put the innards into here so this guy will actually fit properly Alright, so I got the side marker lights to fit in. This side took a little bit of shaving and some fine adjustment with my uh, little air dremel right there. Passenger side went in perfect. Now we have to fit the lights because the way the Bjork kit fits, these actually are recessed inside of here as opposed to actually going up into the bumper itself. So I'm going to have to find a way to adjust it out from there. So I think the best way to do it is probably going to be to shim it on the back side of the plate because this clips into this bracket right here this goes this way and 
this goes in here like this. But I need this to be out to about there and this to be, well, not that far out. But this far in is too far in. I need like a quarter inch farther out on that side and a quarter inch on this side. So I know how I'm gonna do this one. This one's gonna be a little different. I'm probably gonna shave this back out a little bit just to give it a little bit more room. Um, and then this is just gonna be a shim situation, a shim affair. So uh, Cricket did a bunch of trimming, cutting, sourcing, sanding. sanding, grinding, and spacing. And now our lights actually fit inside the bumper, which is sweet. So these ones got a little bit of age on them, so we're gonna you know, buff them out, make them look pretty. At least now we have a point of reference to kind of continue the rest of the kit off and see how our hood gap and all that other stuff will be. Because these things aren't like adjustable, they have like shims on everything. So you can shim the bumper out, shim the bumper in. But fortunately, this and this is all mounted to the portion of the bumper that is shimmed. So when you shim it, the whole thing will move as one. So it's not like when you shim it in or out, these lights are going to get any further or closer to our bumper. Those got their own shims, so. though. Oh, yeah, those have shims. Those too. lights have their own shims. We don't talk about those shims. Those are the forbidden shims. Shimmy, Jimmy. So yeah, once we get the hood mounted and stuff like that, we'll be able to see what our body lines and stuff actually look like. But before we do that, we're going to end up dropping this motor one last time so we can install the water pump, the brand new oil pan that we got, timing belt, it's kind of important. We got some nice fresh painted valve covers and then a whole bunch of PRP stuff that's going to go on there and make this thing all churched up and beautiful. But he also said drop the motor and not lift the motor. So we're going to drop it out the bottom, right? I don't know. We're going to have to take that whole X-brace out to do that. I'm okay with that. If we mount the hood, we don't ever have to take it off again. Maybe we just pull it out because the last time it goes in will be the last time it goes in. Oh, yeah, and the clutch assembly we had to put in oh, there as well. Uh, yeah. I hit my head on everything. So we removed the uh, center console. It was really easy. Uh, back then, they actually did everything in the same size. So you can take the whole dash apart with a Phillips head screwdriver. Something else I learned today. We got a signature. I don't know what it's from. Any of you C4 guys, enlighten me. I know Ron Fellows edition C6 was signed. I know all the um, LS7s are signed by the guy who builds it at Bowling Green. Never seen a signature on a cup holder though. So we might have to add our own too. Because we helped build the car. But yeah, dashboard from the 80s. And we found out that our shifter location, when we were looking before, we thought we were going to have to have a little tiny shifter linkage. Um, but that's because we were basing it off of where the cable went into the trans tunnel and the shifter is actually about eight inches farther back from there so our shifter linkage underneath will be perfect we won't have to do much we're gonna have to cut a hole in the trans tunnel obviously because there isn't one um, and center the shifter over and then that'll actually give us enough room so currently right now it's here it needs to go right here which it might give us enough room on the left or the right for the hydro I'm gonna take this part So there is a big dip right here where the factory um, shifter box and stuff used to go for the automatic. So you can see the tail of our transmission is here and our shifter linkage is right there, which works out good. So our shifter will sit just about centered where our opening is going to be. But it's going to be a little bit offset to the side because we need it on our hydro here. And also our trans tunnel is a little bit offset. So it works out good because then we have room for our hydro right here. Made this plate, which we're going to make a plate that goes underneath the car as well. So we reinforce these fiberglass floorboards a little bit, give it a little bit more structure. And then this just kind of fits right in here, nice and clean. And so that'll give us a spot to mount our shifter. And then once we figure out what hydro we're using, we're just waiting on Adam for that one. And then we can mount that up and then figure out what kind of trimming we have to do for our actual interior trim piece here. Hey Chris. What's up? Trying to get our dock clutch pedal bracket to mount up. There's a bunch of like sound deadening on the firewall. And now I cut that little bit of foam that I needed to out, and it seems like it's kind of sitting where it's supposed to sit. All this for a clutch pedal? All this for a clutch pedal, buddy. These are not the most serviceable things in the world, and this guy, this little hump right here, is not making my job fun. But we're in here. Back to square one. I know that guy. Engine stuff. Hi, Sean. Hi. What are you going to be doing? All the stuff we don't want to do. Mm. Alright, so you're like the RB expert? 
Oh, I need a thermostat. Yeah, it's just the only guy who likes him. So anyways, we're handing over the keys to the show to Sean Booth over here, right. RB connoisseur. He's gonna be putting together that guy right there with all these cool parts. We got PRP, what's this, Sean? Coil bracket. That's a coil bracket. We got the PRP, uh... Coil boots. Coil boots. And then we got the... Water pump. That's a water pump. And then... Oil pump. Oil pump, okay. What's this guy? Read it. Uh, bolts and studs. What's that? Uh, cast bracket. Cast. This is actually OEM Nissan. So, you know, nothing but the best for the RB, right? Yes. And then this PRP stuff, you can find it in stock at our shelves. And we got an oil pan, and then the guys are in the background doing something. But Sean Booth is going to be doing that. Yeah. Beanie Boys, 2022. I'm new boot goofing today. Oh, genuine ostrich. Three payments. What are we making? Uh, we're making a radiator since um, nobody's given us what kind of radiator we're using. We're just going to make our own. So I'm doing uh, some cricket math. It's 28 inches wide, 2 inches deep, and 14 and a half inches you know, the length. So I'm making one out of CAD board. And I'm going to make an intercooler out of CAD board as well. And we're going to figure out what kind of mount setup we're going to do on this. Waiting on answers. We're making it out of cardboard. We uh, made some changes to our intercooler and radiator layout. So originally we had the V-mount set up. Um, we were going to put the puller fans on the bottom of it that were going to kind of pull the heat from the radiator down underneath the car because there's not really any hood vents or anything to get the heat out, which is why these cars have a lot of problems overheating from the factory. So what we did now is we're stacking our intercooler and our radiator on top of each other because with the fans on just the radiator, it'll pretty much divert all the air away from our intercooler. Whereas if we stack it up like this and build some ducting from the front bumper, then we can get equal airflow to both cool down our intercooler and cool down our radiator. I'm going to chop some of that front bumper. So if you look at the kit, this actually hangs down lower than the air vent. So I'm going to take a notch up through here, cut this all the way out, and then it'll give me more room for my duct and give it more space for air volume to go through it. I'm going to chop this out while he works on cleaning up the rack and installing that and doing the front brake lines. So I'm going to get all dusty with some fiberglass. Whoa! I just cut out the front support, made room for our shrouding, and then also cut um, the front bumper to allow more room for the shroud. Because as it was, it was only like this much room for the ducting to go up through it, and I want to give it as much volume as possible. So cut this out so it can actually come up higher and then go to the intercooler and radiator. This allows for a little bit more air movement. And you know, it looks a lot cleaner this way. Dusty. Bro, like it's snowing. <laughs> it's only four bolts to hold on the whole bumper. Better than two zip ties. Yeah. Can't pretty, confirm. Pretty standard. All right, we're installing the PRP crank trigger kit, and we got to take a little corner of the dust cover of our lower timing belt out for the sensor to clear because we're changing from the stock pickup location to the, um, where's that PRP gear? So our new trigger wheel is going to be on the front side of it. So when that goes on there, this sensor has to sit in line with it. And so we just have to take a little corner out of our oil pump right there. 
Nothing too important, just a dust cover, don't worry. So in the C5, C6s, and C7s, they all have a quick release for the roof. I found this sweet Corvette wrench in here, but it doesn't actually come off either, so it's like stuck on here. This is for the roof. This is news to me. This is new C4 stuff from the 80s. Yeah. Look at how clean that thing is. It's never been used. You can't take it apart. You can only make it go on and off. And there's two little holes right up here where the levers are in the C5 and C6s. So I guess I just loosen them up and they pop out. This isn't a quick release thing. Nope. I guess. So it looks way cooler with no roof. We have the option of the see-through top, the white top, or no top. Which the option code is CC3 for all you Corvette gurus. Dual top, $1,950. <laughs> Someone's gonna say something about that in the comments. Yeah. Like, oh, oh, Tell them no one cares. Back in the 80s, it wasn't CC3. <laughs> it is CC3. Still CC3 code. The CC3 one or the? the, uh, the CC3 code is for both. It's dual roof. Corvette salesman oh, over here. Top. So much top. Uh -huh. We found out that the linkage is way up in here, so we have plenty of room to do our shifter linkage um, with the Cooler Works self centering shifter. Very nice, very clean. We're gonna have add a little bit of sauce onto this. Like the Cooler Works, it has the reverse lockout right here. So in order to, you have to set these pins in here and this will end up pulling back so you can actually put your car into reverse. Otherwise, if you don't lift that up, it'll only let you go into first, so you have no chance of hitting reverse. And also so, what's nice about those Cooler Works shifters is it raises our pivot point, so it's not pivoting at the floorboard, it's pivoting a little bit higher, so that shortens the throw of the shifter. So when we have the hydro next to it, we don't have to worry about when you put it in reverse that you hit the hydro. Speaking of hydros, we are going to be using the Drift HQ. This is a used, used boy, don't worry about it. We took it out of uh, Blue Thunder just for mock-up purposes. We're using the Drift HQ hydro because the way the wheel would mount is sideways. So we're doing an inline hydro for this. And if it was set up like this, you'd have lines coming out and it would just make this all not clean and pretty. So Chris found this one and we're gonna use this side mounted. So don't put that hydro on the seat. You're stressing me out. So we went, and this was their initial Cooler Works shifter that we got. It wasn't self-centering, and Joel showed me the really cool self-centering shifter. However, it's about this much taller. And so I went with the smaller Cooler Work, uh, and that will allow me to a few things. The base plate on the Cooler Works, smaller one is about a half inch skinnier. So for me, that works really well because I run out of, I'm running out of room in there. So with the smaller one, it's a half inch skinnier this way. So I'm able to actually mount my hydro back in right there. I'm going to weld that on. And we'll have our hydro mount and our shifter mount done. The only thing I'll have left to do on it is paint the bracket after I get everything, you know, drilled out and set. I'll end up painting it, putting everything back on it, and then we'll bolt it down to the trans tunnel. And uh, I can work on making this pretty guy fit somehow. Because it's all plastic. So we had to notch out this trans tunnel, as you saw earlier in the video. It has pre-drilled pre and threaded holes, but you know, we're gonna add more. I'm gonna cut into this. These are $100 online for minty fresh ones. We called our boy over at Coastal Corvettes. He said he'd give me one, but it's missing clips to bolt it down, which doesn't help us. So I'm just gonna El Chapo this one. So we got um, the whole base plate made through because our fiberglass trans tunnel are drilling through the small portions that are already metal inside here as well as putting a backing plate on them that's going to hold them in place so that way when we pull on the hydro or like you're shifting real hard it's not going to rip these mounts out here because this isn't the strongest stuff in the world I can move it by hand. 
So it's going to be boxed in with six big old M8 bolts. Should hold up pretty well. So as we're creating all new brake hard lines for the front, we are using the Drift HQ C5 C6 extended front brake hoses, which not only replaces the rubber hoses, but also gives you a little bit more length for the angle kits. So these come in inverted flare and in a bubble flare. We're going to use the inverted flare ones for this. Pops right in like the stock one, connects the caliper and gives you all of that motion. So we got these nice fittings from Earl's that are compression adapters for hard lines. So it comes with this junction that you slide down there. Then you have a compression sleeve, which will go on top of there. And then once you get that seated, you thread the back end onto here, and you crank it down real tight. And we ran these things like to 120 PSI just to see what they would test, and we've never had a leak on them, so we've had pretty good luck so far. Hoping for the same. And if you don't feel like running AN lines all the way from the rear of the car to the front of the car, this is a great way to adapt the stock hard lines on there to AN fittings. Great way to adapt uh, your stock hard lines to AN lines. So that way you only have to worry about replacing the sections inside your engine bay as opposed to having to run 50 feet of AN hose and securing it under the chassis. Well, we got our uh, flex plate in finally. We have our clutch assembly and flywheel and everything from PMC. So, came with our new flywheel bolts. So we gotta put our flex plate on just for the starter engagement on there. So we'll start with that. Then this guy, one bolt to line it up. Don't like that at all. Nope. There she is. <laughs> just to be sure. Good. That's stressful. Sweating. We're using all these pretty ACT parts. Spend the money. Do it right the first time. Nice six buck sprung disc. Make it a little easier on our drive line than solid setup. And this nice, I think, 3,200 pound pressure plate. Don't quote me on that. I know the internet gets mad. So we got to wrap this one up quick because they got a car on the dyno. We are not able to put our motor and trans together right now because we're missing the starter, which actually that car right there has the starter we need, but we can't take it. And we got to notch the bell housing of our trans, and once it's in the car, it's going to be really difficult to take out. So that'll be it for today's video. Next video, we will be doing the body kit, what everybody's been waiting for. So like, subscribe, comment. Y'all.